So do you know? Got it. I just started um, our recording. Do you know who Charles Chase is? I do. Charles is here for Francis Francis. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Hello, spoken, Charles. He and I have spoken several times. Oh, good. Great. It's good. How have you been, Meryl? Good. It's are you you're in New York, right? I'm in New York. Is it a gorgeous day in New York today, like um, it is in Milfleet? I haven't been outside. I've been working all day in my office. I have a big presentation tomorrow in Westchester that I've been oh, working boy. on all day. Um, You're wonderful to do this tonight. You know, it's, I have people working out there. I hear their little voices uh -huh. <laughs> in, the, in the main area out there. It will be fine. Is this a proposal for a project? It's a project for which we have already the commission, but it's... Um, beautiful 30 acre site in Pound Ridge on a mm -hmm. lake next to the Pound Ridge Reservation. And it has this horrible, albeit 5,800 square foot log house that we're taking down. And mm -hmm. we have to make sure it's in the same footprint and they want it to be smaller. And so we're doing sort of narrow long forms so that mm -hmm. the view of the lake is what you really see instead of being in the middle of a great big wide house. And that's as far as we got. And we're using a couple of different vocabularies as inspiration that we're going to go over with the client tomorrow. One of them is Frank Lloyd Wright's Serlin House, which is in Usonia in Pleasantville, uh -huh. which is just down the road from this house. Um, oh, great. Another is this sort of like these modern barns that you sometimes see where they're kind of narrow and tall and they have steel and glass windows in them with uh -huh. lighting, a lot of reclaimed materials, a lot of organic stuff. Um, and then a third is some uh, inspiration we got from a Marcel Breuer house, which sort of has a stone wall that comes across the site and then enters the house and cuts through the house. Oh, fun. Our idea is to sort of integrate the house with the site. And I mean, the idea of re-landscaping the site and getting rid of all the dis little stuff is that a bird sort of flew over your head and dropped seeds. And there's a meadow of unmown grass that goes down to the pond with one path mown through it that kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Sounds lovely. I think it'll be good. It's just, it's, <laughs> there's that. It's a lot of work to put together three different proposals, three different ideas, I imagine. Oh, but it's, it's, yeah, we have three different kind of schematic ideas of how the house could sit on the site. And then we have a series of inspiration photos that we're showing them as to what these different architectural vocabularies will be. And then um, we'll get a notion from them about um, what they relate to. She, this client actually liked my old house in Katona, which had that sort of Usonian horizontal V-groove siding and was long and low and close to the ground. And the back of it was just black steel and glass windows that looked uh -huh. out over a kind of a field. Oh, nice. So just, it, it sort of, it's, you know, it's kind of understated. I mean, it's not one of these like fake shingle style houses on steroids. It's not <laughs> you know, it's none of that nonsense. It's just like yeah. quiet and organic in its re use of reclaimed material and also the way it integrates with the site. I mean, that's sort of what I feel. Oh, I have to let these other people in. Pardon me. <laughs> Do your job. Right. Your other job. Right, right. Yeah, I am doing this right. <laughs> hey, Tim. Hey, Jay. And who is T? Do Hello. we know? Tim Curley. Egan. Oh, it's Tim Egan. Hi. Are we supposed to call you Tim Egan or Tim Curley? It's it's your choice. It's Curley Egan, but um, I usually go by Tim Egan. We're debating changing our names right now, so. <laughs> I have a hyphenated name. I understand what this is like. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot. And it's like the credit card thing is fun because they won't let you put a hyphen on a credit card on my or most of my cards. So then it's like it's a whole thing. So our kids are hyphenated Galloway Con. And uh, sometimes when they were in sports, sometimes it would be Harry Con number three. And sometimes it would be Harry Galloway number eight. Yeah. It's sort of like depending upon what sport and how the coach interpreted things. Yeah. And also. Our kids are also hyphenated and i don't know what my son is going to be getting married i don't know what he's going to do with this hyphen we haven't even had that conversation <laughs> <laughs> told them they could do whatever they want like the spaniards yeah exactly <laughs> Nicholas, mead fox de la whatever <laughs> right exactly the middle well, I, the last I think adding more names is a good solution yeah oh yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we're having the same discussion right now because we're getting married in June. And my brother and I originally talked about one of us taking the Egan and one of us taking the Curly. And my brother was going to take the Curly, but his fiance, his fiance now wife, her name is Jody Lee, and she couldn't countenance being Jody Lee Curly. So she was like, we'll just keep the Curly Egan. <laughs> wise, wise woman. <laughs> yeah. So your parents, your parents' last names were hyphenated? No, my mother is Curly and my father is Egan. Wow. Ah. Yeah. And so the kids got hyphenated names in your family. Yes. Ah. Yeah, that's like, well, this is, you know, yeah. What have we done to our children? Well, <laughs> I can tell you one thing. My family's not going to Texas anytime soon. <laughs> no. I mean, they're already, they're already investigating three families with transgender kids. Oh, that's awful. As for child, for child abuse. Oh, it's so horrible. It's so bummer. Yeah. It's such a crazy world. Really, it's terrible. Anyway, we don't have to get into all that now. Yeah. Hey, Charles. Hey, Hello, Charles. can you see me? I see you. Yes, okay. we see you. Can you see work. us? Here comes <laughs> Jim. It's Jim. I always forget that I'm the guy who has to admit people. So I look up there and see. Oh. You have the power. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. We can't hear you, though. You must be muted. Yeah. You know, you can unmute yourself in the lower. Yeah. There yeah. I am. Yes. Hey, Jim. Yep. Thank you. Glad to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Susan Baker won't be with us this evening because she's in Spain. Lucky woman. Um, we have one, two, three board members. Yeah, so we need one more before we start. We we need to have a quorum of four people right. out of our seven. It's I not haven't. Hard. We still have two minutes. Yeah, and I haven't heard from anybody else that they aren't coming. Um, and fingers crossed that the next meeting I'll be at my own house. Finally. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. It's almost done. It's we um, handed in our final uh, building permit today and we'll be sending that along and hopefully getting our CO very soon. All right. Congratulations. Congrats. You're, Congrats. Get, you're getting your house and then your marriage. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind year. <laughs> yeah. So where are you getting married? So we're actually going to get married uh, here um, on Ocean View Drive with a small ceremony and then our reception will be at Chiquesanec. Right. Oh, great. Are you are you doing it in the boathouse or in the in the boathouse? Uh huh. Fun. And we've we've booked a six piece um, New Orleans second line band, which will be pretty. Oh, cool. yeah. That sounds like fun. Yeah, we'll let we'll let you know. You can sneak around, you know, at eight o'clock at night. <laughs> Ed and I were married there when the tide went out. We kind of got married out there in the bay oh wow and, and then we had uh, our reception in the uh in the boathouse we never even got into the main building such as it is we just stayed at the beach that's uh, our plan it was nice we had a clam bake oh great <laughs> oh, that's great have you found a venue yet meryl no, so my son um tim has also is also planning to get married he and oh, his wow. fiance plan to get married in I guess it was April of 2019, and we all know that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's marrying somebody who um, grew up partly in Africa and partly in Canada. And, oh. and so they're trying to do a wedding with people from at least three countries, and it's been challenging during the pandemic. So they're common law married in Canada instead. Oh, that's <laughs> great. And, and where in Africa? Uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, okay. That's yeah, great. so the wedding originally was going to be there, and I was looking forward to that. I haven't been to Africa. We were going to do a wedding and a safari. I liked that oh, idea. Right, yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> um, but it's not happening now. <laughs> last week or the week week and a half ago, we were actually in Costa Rica for a wedding, and we had they had people from um, they said nine countries, and it was quite a. Oh. Getting everyone there was was quite mm. a challenge. But I, I actually used to live in Johannesburg. Oh, did you? Wow. Yeah. For how long? Uh, for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. We were, yeah, I hear. Yeah. 
It's it's partly because his fiancee wanted her grandmother to be there, but she's too infirm to be there, even if they have it in Africa. And it's so oh, complicated sure. now with the vaccine situation in Africa. So I think they're going to have three different occasions. <laughs> one in Vancouver where they live, maybe oh. one in Wellfleet, maybe one in Toronto, but we'll see. So I was talking to Gordon about venues in Wellfleet, but I decided... I'm going to let them plan their wedding first. I got way ahead of them in planning. And <laughs> right, I said, no, the wedding comes first. I'm, I, we can do a party in a tent if need be. <laughs> yeah. So Matt Gatch just emailed me that he needed the Zoom, and I sent him the link again, and I'm admitting him now. So that gives us a call. Right. So that gives right. us four. Great. We're ready for Mac. <clears throat> Hey, Mac. Mac, I see your name, but I don't see you. That's what's happened. Ah. Ah. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Mac. Can you speak, Mac, so we can hear you? Connect. Connecting to audio now. Oh. Hey, Mac, are you on this? He's on mute. Oh, unmute. Oh. There Yay, you there you are. Hey, Mac, welcome. Welcome back to New York. Welcome. <laughs> nice to have you with us. <laughs> Good to be here. So we have a quorum now, Meryl, so I think we can start. Right. We have a quorum and it's 5.02, so we will start the meeting. And um, the first property that we're considering is 1515 Baker Avenue. And John, John, can you pronounce your name for us? Bombara, and uh, you're welcome to call me Jay, if you like. Um, oh, that's right. Thank you. Oh, you okay. changed it on your picture. Great. <laughs> right. yeah. No, my, uh, my my mother named me John on my legal documents and has always called me Jay, so you'd have to ask her what uh, why that is. But uh, okay. at any rate, uh, please, uh, my friends, colleagues, etc., call me Jay, so please feel free to do that. Although John's fine. If you forget, not I don't get offended. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, I'm just I'm having a little, I don't know, my computer's spinning and spinning, but it's not opening up your application. Oh, dear. Um, well, you, do you want to start talking to us about it or should we wait for the picture? Well, I'm happy to do whatever you'd like. I can give you a brief sort of background on what's going on at 1515 Baker Avenue. And um, so uh, I think, you know, I did get the pleasure of meeting most of you. I think at your last meeting, um, I was able to say hello just because I was trying to get a sense of how you guys operate and uh, just observe and, and understand uh, to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So my wife and I bought 1515 Baker Avenue uh, about a year ago, last January, um, you know, doing a lot of things, but mostly by ourselves so far, um, mostly cosmetic so far. Um, there are... Um, in addition to the house, uh, several uh, two outbuildings on the property. Um, if I did send a, sur a copy of the survey we had, the, the survey shows actually a couple more. One was, a, I believe, a well house, which is no longer there. Um, and one, I believe, was some sort of structure they used to house uh, marine craft or something. And that's also no longer there. So it's just the two larger structures that are shown uh, really closest to the house uh, that remain. The uh, reason I'm here today is for the, uh, if you're looking at the survey, I guess. And Excuse me, Jay, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I have to restart my computer. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, so we should probably froze. stop the meeting, so it's I'm, important. Yeah, I'm gonna restart and then um, I'll have to ask everybody to please rejoin using the same link. Oh dear, so we should all go. But, uh, yeah, I guess we will go when you turn it off. All right, so see you all soon. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry.
Just close up. Oh, this to close. Try to close soon. Yeah. Try to open. When you start the computer just soon and the PDF that you are going to share on the team. Wait. Let me try it. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Hey, some people. Hey, Meryl. Hi. Sorry, guys. Okay. Do you think it's going to work this time? Do you want to try it out? Share. Desktop, right? Uh, that looks promising. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm well supported. In <laughs> We're so glad that your support supports us. Right. Let me just shut the door to my office. Okay. So, Jay, I'm sorry I missed a bunch of what you were saying, but but please uh, start. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll start over and I'll, I'll be quicker. Um, I wasn't really saying a lot. So, as I said, um, my wife and I bought the property in January of last year and we're uh, getting to things, um, doing a lot of some interior stuff and also starting to look at the outside. Um, if you if you go to the survey, um, which I think I included with this or I sent it later, I can't remember. Apologies, it wasn't all one, uh, Gordon. No, no, no. Um, yeah. yeah, so it, uh, I don't know if you can flip it. If not, uh, I guess in the buildings to the right. Um, I don't know you see I the first largest is obviously the house. Um, yeah, the, the house is here. Yes. Baker Avenue continues here and goes down to Main Street in this direction. Correct. This is the portion of Baker Avenue that continues and winds around in a dirt road until you get to Holbrook down here. Correct. The main house is here. Um, this is a shed that's in deteriorated condition, but charming. Um, and this is the subject building, Correct. Correct. And I just added, in case you're interested or wondering, those two other little structures shown are both gone. And one was a well house. Right. Uh, one was uh, some kind of marine craft uh, storage. I believe they were gone before we owned the property. Right. It, it's really, it's sort of this, this, and this. Correct. And I guess I will say, since you noted the shed, we, we do love the shed as well. It does have this, and you can see by the outline, this kind of strange, it's really an addition, that part there. Um, but the original form or the uh, primary form is really quite interesting. And uh, I would hope that we're going to try to find a way to save it. It actually, as a structure, doesn't seem too bad. It's really this, uh, it needs a foundation, probably needs to be moved a little bit out of that corner. But that's not what we're here for today. You can no. give me advice or, or comments on that later. Thank you for saying that, Jay, because I, I mean, speaking personally, to my eye, that's an interesting, an interesting little outbuilding. Now, I like to say that anytime you point out an outbuilding to somebody in Wellfleet, they'll tell you that it came from Billingsgate. So I know. probably <laughs> didn't. But, uh, <laughs> I have six of them in my house. <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I knew if it did. That would be really exciting um, if it did. So, um, so the bill, yes. The, so the subject is actually even on there. You can see it. Yes, is that um, what's well, now a two-story uh, called garage? The first floor really does appear to have been used as a garage. The other side has. Uh, doors, which, you know, are big enough for cars to come in and out of three bays. Uh, the second story is just a large open um, kind of loft, if you will, but it's full, fully over the entire space. 
Uh, it was added actually, there you go. It was actually added um, in the 1980s. Uh, you know, I'll say again, I mean, uh, it's too, unfortunately it, was, it had a nice uh, uh, hip roof on it and it was a one story structure. It was really a quite interesting building, but uh, the Bakers, I guess, and I was hoping maybe uh, she'd be here, Susan would be here, maybe she'd know more than I do, but uh, I think they, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the Bakers decided they wanted uh, some more space for, I think uh, the, he was a train collector uh, an enthusiast uh, for, for space for that. So they added the second floor in the 80s um, and it's kind of a nondescript, uh, there's not a lot of detail or interesting lines, I'll, I'll admit that. And, you know, we'll keep that in the back of our head if there's some way to someday kind of add a little more interesting and appropriate uh, architectural detail. But mm -hmm. what we're trying to do today is um, really just protect the building and the skin. Uh, on the other side of the building, um, the side that sort of fronts uh, the lawn, um, we're gonna, there's four windows on the first floor, which um, the sashes are actually okay. They seem to be some replacement sashes. Maybe those were put in the eighties, but the, the, the frames themselves are totally shot and gone and you can put your hand through them. So we purchased, I mean, I know I should have waited to talk to you, but we purchased four replacement windows for those, same size, um, six over six, double hung, true divided light. Um, so we plan on putting those in. Jade, let me add to that single glazed and from Brosco, right? Correct. So it really is like for like in this case. Correct, that's that's what we were, we're, we're trying to do. Right. Um, and, it, and you know, I appear- Document as, that here. Yeah, those are the, and I, <laughs> So the windows came, and I will say those are sitting in that garage. And uh, I then tried to find the paperwork with all the detail, and I couldn't. Uh, and I'm I here. Went, I can tell by the model number here that you're. Okay, good. Because uh, you, you guys might know better than me, because I actually went back to uh, Midcape and said, can you print it out? And he couldn't, and he ended up giving me a book. I couldn't quite, I'm, you know, I wasn't quite 100% sure exactly the terms you're using are accurate, but it, it is what I believe they are. It is. So anyway, I took a photo. It says SGL and true divided light in there. Yeah. So okay. that's that's the principal work that's going to be done. I will be doing it with my uh, by myself and and uh, with family. Um, however, uh, again, if you look at the uh, uh, obviously it needs a paint job, but if you look at uh, and I don't know if the detail shows it, even the photos, but. There are a lot of, of boards, especially the lower part, you can see that, that are gonna need to be replaced. Uh, hopefully we can save almost all the rest of the boards to the extent any of those trim boards, which I think they're okay, other than the, um, not the sash, but the, 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 uh, the bottom part of the window. Um, it, yes, uh, those you know will be replaced because it's part of the windows we purchased, but otherwise all that trim, we will leave it as it is. Again, it's not particularly interesting. The door, I have no plan yet on, on doing anything to. I'm hoping we can uh, restore that. Um, if I do decide that we can't, then I would purchase a door that would match and would and come back to you. But at the moment, uh, hopefully we can repair it well enough to, to, uh, to, to paint the, the side. Um, I was hoping to reuse the sashes you see on the existing windows because they're actually not in bad shape. They were kind of these inserts, but they're not the right size to match those awful windows up top. So at the moment, um, I'm sure I'll be back to you. I've got to figure out what to do, um, hopefully replacing at least the sashes uh, on those one over one windows or whatever you call them. They're also, uh, and again, there's others on the call that'll know better than me, the, the gas or whatever between the panes is gone and it looks like they're constantly, um, you know, um, uh, dirty or uh, um, uh, a in them or, just look awful. Um, so that would be something we'd want to do as well. Uh, so if you know, you're just, replacing the windows down here with single glazed true divided light windows, um, and this is an unheated garage space. Correct. As I recall, this is a room that looks like it has sort of 1970s pressed wood paneling in it and looks like it might've been a hobby room or an office. It yeah. looks like it might've had a heat source too. It, it does actually. Right, and these double glazed windows here that have seal failure causing condensation in between the panes were installed upstairs, I suspect, because it was a heated space and they have a higher insulation value. However, I would venture to say 
that given how few windows there are up here, you could install single glazed true divided light windows up here too. And it would be much more in keeping with what you're doing here. And also the main house where Sam Aggers um, basically had all the existing windows stripped and restored and reinstalled prior to you acquiring the property. So if you do anything that's double glazed, you're gonna get in trouble in contrast to everything else that's there. Okay. Because everything else is single glazed, glazed with a narrow true mullion or mutton bar. If you do double glazed, you'll have to get either those glue on muttons with spacer bars between them um, or very, very thick muttons because they have to be wider in order to hold two panes of glass. So we can talk to the building inspector when it comes time to replace those windows up there. Um, you're on the national register. Um, there can be exceptions made based on historic preservation guidelines. Yeah, it just it, it does beg the question. What what um, when did when was your commission founded or started? In the eighties. So you maybe you missed this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm, right. I'm sitting here going, well, these are not, you know, these are 1980s windows. Um, yeah, they probably went in before the shame, commission was established. Yeah. Or in the early days of the commission, even now, sometimes things are not always referred to us. We're working on kind of getting that fixed. <laughs> no, that's fine. I just curious. I mean, again, I'm very interested in the history of the house and the evolution and how these houses grow and change organically, if you will. And um, so that's the only reason why I ask uh, um, so yeah, the only other thing I guess I would add is again, um, and we didn't necessarily, I didn't take pictures of all four sides. You know, we would be trying to um, fix all the siding on all four sides. Uh, at the moment, no changes to the windows on the other sides, which are also mm -hmm. double hung um, only on the first floor. Uh, and there are these beautiful- You can see better there. There are no windows on the other, on the, uh, other sides or the gable sides. Right. Uh, on the second floor, there are on the first floor. Those I'm going to leave for now. And again, they match uh, mm -hmm. what's there. And these are sort of beautiful old garage. Yeah, too. no, I, I, you know, other than a repair to the extent they need it, they're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Uh, plan to, to keep all of that. Uh, they are lovely. I did, when I moved in, re replace a number of panes that were cracked and, and broken. Um, and those windows on the second floor do match the, those, the ones you saw on the second floor on the other side. Yeah, that indicate that the space was heated. Yeah, that's uh, there's a gas heater there, and it's. I think I'm going to take it out. You can actually see barely. I don't know if you if you zoomed in, but there's a a, a, a gas line that kind of comes across and makes that the, in between the two windows, uh, just below it, where that spot. Yep, right in there. That little line is actually the gas line. So I, I think I'm going to take that out. Um, I don't. We don't plan on using it. Uh, you know, all season at this point. Um, you know, and we're not renting it or anything like that. Uh, and we couldn't for that matter. It's not, a, there's no bathroom or anything in there. Um, so I, I think I'm going to take off most of the things which are sort of these additional. There's also on the uh, side, which you can't see at all. So the one side you really can't see, there is an old um, stove pipe going up the side, which is all rusted out. There is a stove, wood stove on the first floor which is probably coming out again. I don't have any intent on using it in the uh, winter months uh, and using uh, wood or other things. So again, it's really gonna be just cleaning up the skin, uh, replacing boards that need to be replaced uh, and giving it a paint job. Um, so really for preservation uh, more than anything else uh, at this time. So, so when, I mean, most of the historical significance on this site is related to the main house or the two main houses that were brought together. And the Form B, um, which is the filing with the Massachusetts Historical Commission, um, really speaks about that. But when it comes time to do the work here, we'd love to talk to you about it. Just, you know, to talk about maybe getting rid of the vinyl siding trying to put some of this detail back where it used to be here. And I think those pieces still exist on the property somewhere, right? The rail? They do. Um, there appear to be a number of, and we are interested in doing that for the porch. Right. The balusters are there at one time. It had uh, these, uh, I don't know, they're probably not code anymore, but they had balusters going across. Um, 
there are, I guess maybe I should ask, I mean, so at some point, it's hard to see the detail where the um, columns meet the porch roof. They have, they're not structural, but they have these little detail brackets. Mm -hmm. Some of them are the original, maybe two inch thick, but at some point, I guess they rotted or whatever. Somebody said, oh, let's replace some. And they made them like one inch thick. So they look absolutely awful. One, we have some of the original ones in the barn. My father, who's a woodworker, has also made exact copies for me. I plan just to do that. If you're telling me I need a permit, I'm happy to do that. But well, no, that's I, that's really what yeah. that's what we would ask of you anyway. Is that you simply replaced all of that exterior trim detail and woodwork and and exterior siding? Get rid of the vinyl siding. Oh yeah, that's coming someday. Yeah. And fortunately, I believe that the previous owners, although some of this stuff is removed. Um, there is a bunch of it on site still. It was preserved so that it could be either replicated or reused. Right. That's, oh. That is correct. There, is a, there are a number of the, the balusters. There's actually some, uh, a number of uh, shutters in the uh, tube. I'm not sure where exactly they were on the house, but uh, so, so there are some of that. Uh, and there it's were some a, of these brackets. It's such a pretty picture of this house on the... Um, Historical Society website, and I didn't pull it up for this meeting, but if you search this house under the photo section of the Wellfleet Historical Society, not the commission, there's sort of a great shot of this view here when all the detail is there and there are a series of shutters and that detail and those shutters really give, really give a lovely scale to this elevation of the house, which looks a little massive now without the relief that the shutters and these details provided. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have seen those all those photos. I've, yeah. I've, I've found all of them. Yeah. yeah, that certainly is the longer term project. I will say, you know, a little afraid to take off the uh, siding, the, the vinyl siding that they put on it, or a little, yeah. I think it is vinyl. It is vinyl. It's vinyl. Uh, because I'm afraid to find out what I find underneath. And, you know, it's just a matter of uh, resources and time and picking the projects as we right. go here, but certainly that is in the uh, plan over the next <laughs> year, certainly, hopefully. Certainly not asking you to do everything at once. I know you came before us for like four windows, so that's fine. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate the fact that you are being so thoughtful about the restoration of this house, and um, uh, I'm so happy that you and your wife have bought it and that you're going to take good care of it. So, Thank thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Jay, listen, reach out anytime if you have questions. I will. I appreciate that offer you know, because just, I do have questions. So that's yeah, great. Call, send an email, you know, call me on the phone, call Meryl, call somebody, and we'll and we're happy to help you. Great. All right. Very Thank much you. appreciate it. Sure. So um, so I would like to make a motion to um, accept this proposal um, as proposed. <laughs> I second that motion. So shall we vote? I vote aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you all very much. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for doing what you do as well. I really do appreciate that, uh, what you guys are doing. And welcome to a great place because of people like you. So we'll be talking to you soon, I'm sure. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you. Bye. Take good care. <laughs> okay. Um, and now we're going to talk about Francis Francis at 355 Main Street. So Charles, do you want to explain what you're planning to do and I'll kind of guide people through? Yes, um, sorry, for, uh, just to let you know, first off is Franny was expecting to be here too, but uh, it turns out that she is having some issues getting back from her vacation and is on a train somewhere and got scolded for using her phone. So oh, <laughs> she will not be with us. <laughs> and but, Charles, uh, can you give us your last name? Is Charles Chase. Okay, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Maybe photos will help. Yeah. You okay. describe what's going on best for me. All we are trying to do here is a couple, there's a couple of things we're trying to do. One is replace the roof. The roof needs to be replaced, upper and lower. Um, Franny has picked up the color that you saw below, which is a pewter wood, which is the closest thing that we could find to the color that is already up there. Mm -hmm. So okay. that was the color that they, right now, due to, uh, you know, with the coronavirus, believe it, there's certain shingles you can't get. The color is very limited right now. Right. Um, 
yes one of those things that's affected but anyways uh you know that was the closest thing that we could find in that in that color range and uh so that was what was one of the things is and the picture that we have right here actually if you look up to the chimney too because the chimney is another issue um it's been capped it's, it's no longer in function in anything at all and as if you look where the baseline of the roof is Somebody has literally taken probably about a, a couple of gallons of tar, <laughs> pasted it around the bottom to try and seal the roof. Um, you can see where it's actually dried and cracked. That's where that dark shadow line is, where, the, where, the, where it actually meets the roof, that real black area. That's all that is, is a giant crack. In the, so, but when you redo the roof, you can flash, reflash the chimney, right? Um, she could. Uh, she was looking to take it down because it doesn't serve any purpose. And it's also, you know, it's old, too. It, 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 it could obviously be a liability, too. Like, I'm the, I didn't have a mason come look at it, you know, to, as far as to try and rejoin it or anything. But I think she was just looking to try and, you know, to keep the, the cost of the project down yeah. and just get, you know, get rid of it. Because if they tear it down, I mean, even if they were going to rebuild it, they'd have to tear it down to rebuild it. You know, so attached to chimneys. You know, let's table we, that part of the discussion as we get further through. Your okay, time. okay. So that was one of the, but that was one of the, uh, the the things there. The other thing is this same side right here, where all the gutter lines are, is all rotted. A lot of that wood, especially more towards the roadside, like above the very front of this picture with with the Francis sign is. Yeah, we did. did you send a picture of that? I think I did. There's, there's several spots, but that was just that was just one of them. Um, right there. There you go. As you can see, and what this is, these gutters are integrated into the woodwork, and mm -hmm. they are obviously rotted and failing. And so, what she wanted, what we we're proposing to do, is to remove that, replace it with a, with a with a straight fascia, and then just put the gutters that they've already put down over the rubber roof on the other side. Is this like, and, and right there too. The yeah, this gutter. is, a, this yeah. is just an OG preformed aluminum gutter, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and are the other gutters wooden incorporated wooden gutters? The ones on the very front of the main structure are, yes. Uh -huh. and you'd be, okay. Are you, I'm sorry, and you're seeking to remove the wooden gutters and replace them with the preformed aluminum OG gutters? Yes, yes. And do we know if the wooden gutters are original to the house? Um, it would appear that that area right there appears to be um, the two front left and right sides. And I, I believe the reason they do it, they, they don't do that anymore is obviously because they fail and this is what happens, you know. Yeah, um, then again, also too very, very uh, costly to redo something like that. That would be more like a ship's right work, in my opinion, this day and age, you know, but. We actually had a house um, in Newton, so in Massachusetts, that had okay. wooden gutters, and we replaced them with wooden gutters, and they they actually work very well if you take care of them. Just, yes, just these are not them. these are not fur gutters, though. They're not replaceable. That's a custom built gutter that's actually built into the actual roof line. Yeah, that's what ours was too. Yeah. Okay. Just old fashioned integral gutters yeah. that are often lined with metal, and they're they're made of wood and and lined with metal. Yeah. Um, it's a costly thing to install. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously there's been a great deal of deterioration here as a result of it. I just, the one question I have about it is if you remove the integral gutter that we see here, yes. what are you left with behind it? Is it just a flat fascia board? It's a, yes, it would be a flat fascia board there, but the appearance is, is what we would most likely, you know, try and keep to do the most is the bottom appearance would be the, exactly the same. And then the other gutter, the, you know, the OG gutter, what you're calling, would just take up the, the, the top part there, the last member that's on that 45 degree angle. Is this what I'm pointing to now? Exactly, like right where your little scroller is there. So mm -hmm. that, you know, the first and second member of the fascia would appear to be the exact same, I believe, when, when we're done. It might be, you know, within an inch different, higher or lower, but it would, we would still give it that same appearance and then just attach so, the gutter. So from, so from this point here, all this is all the same until you get to this very last step, which is the, basically the underside of the integral gutter. Yeah. And that's exactly. where your OG would begin. Yes. The only thing that I'm not sure of is and this would be you know kind of up to you I guess but where where, where this like kind of the the larger first and second member down below where you first started at okay 
when you go down to the thing, there's a piece between the first and second member right there. You're on it. Right, you were just on it. That little yeah. 45 degree angle piece. Um, um, would, with, with that material, I'm not sure if that would end up being exactly that same exact detail because of what it is. It's like that was some kind of like a Scotia molding almost. Yeah. You know. But. So, so it's steps and steps and steps, and then there's a 45 degree. Yeah, it's almost, yeah. It, 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 what it is, though, it's, down, like a, yeah. it's like a cove molding that you would see. But you know how they, they make like a 60 40 or a 40 40? They make different angles and it's different. This right here. There yeah. we go. Exactly. That gives it a better thing. Mm -hmm. you know we'd like so, to see that we'd like to see that replicated i think maybe i'm just yeah confused. okay well i mean it, you know it's just a, it's just a matter of whether we can get that at the exact angle that's all i was saying it'd be the same piece you know what i mean but they do make them a little like when you buy new materials versus old materials sometimes it varies slightly that's all i'm saying and you're going to be using azac for all this yes yep and this soffit is going to be azac too um, really just right, yeah, right there, that under soffit in the fascia and up. Everything below that we're going to try and keep. Like these larger pieces, believe it or not, are in very good shape. They just need to be this repainted. This. Yeah, believe it or not. I went up there and, you know, jammed around with a screwdriver and, you know, checked to make sure it wasn't rotted. So that the idea right now is for the whole lower to stay and then not just get repainted, mm -hmm. which I believe she's been in contact with Ned Oliver. Oh, with Ned. So yeah. let me ask you, but I mean, right here, for example, is is all is all just going to be is all going to be cleaned up and repainted all so the, it's all it's it's reparable okay good yep, all the clapboard right now for her for right now is she's not touching any of that just trying to really fix the you know fix the water damage and so stop the water from you know damaging it any farther and then just kind of repainting it and getting it cleaned up and the new roof on it that's Charles thing. do you think you could keep the wood and repair it up and including this angled piece if you're if you're looking to keep that, I think if we can't keep that, I think our best bet would be redo it in wood anyway. I think if we have to get it made, it's going to be easier to make it out of wood than it is out of Azac. I don't think it's an doesn't look like it lends itself to Azac to me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So and then just the upper parts do with the Azac so we can hide that, you know. Right. That would be Azac. And then you're just gonna yeah. do an OG white, I assume, just a preformed aluminum. Yep. Yeah, she doesn't plan on changing any any other thing other than that, you know. Okay. And, I mean, obviously, the 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 integral gutter has is causing damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. But here you already have the OG gutter. Yeah, and they also have it on the whole other side where the rubber flat roof is on the other side. I'm not sure if we got pictures of that. I didn't think to, but actually, you can see it in that picture right there, a the little lower. In this little lower piece right there is actually gutter. In the oh, right here. Right there. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And this is all reparable. Yeah. Yeah. She does not plan on changing that. We had a discussion and I told her at this point, because, you know, let's face it, by the time that she's done with the roof and the trim work, it's probably going to be a sizable amount. So I think she would like to stop there, kind of recoup before she goes farther, you know. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Um, well, I just have a question. So in looking at this picture, yeah. Um, is um so where is the azac in that part i assume there's some in there right under is it where, right where that where seam? that seam is that is azac right there that fascia board yeah okay and how about below that is that azac below nope, that? that's wood down below like right right um that i believe is azac the first piece and then that those two pieces are wood you can see the paint chips on the second two pieces the two lower so this is azac this is azac but yep. then this is wood that's wood and then down below and that this point down is wood yeah Sorry. Uh -huh. so, so that gives us a pretty good sense of what it might look like with the combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, they, you know, that's probably exactly what the other side was before they did it. Like the other side, what we are looking at for the rotted trim before they did this work was probably the same gutter system, I'm assuming. Yeah. I don't have any pictures to prove that, but they probably cut out what was failing and did that. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm yeah. sure it was everywhere. Okay. So from, from what I understand, it's everything in the profile is going to be like for like. It's what we're what we're discussing mostly is the wood gutter system needing to be replaced. Yeah. And the sort of way that I would think about it is that the building structure itself, which is the profile we're talking about, is being unchanged. And the, the gutter itself is a reflection of technology. And if that was the wooden gutter at the time, if it's not architecturally significant, as a craftsman piece, I don't have a problem with doing what is technology today. Um, as long as the profile of the building 
is kept and those details are matched, I think it's it's perfectly acceptable. Um, yeah, I tend I tend in that direction as well. We do need to talk about um, the chimney, and um, and we're we are also talking about repairing rod on the north wall fascia and the west side of the building. Is that right? Yes, and this would be this is the north wall. It might that you just went past. It's the two sides that we were just discussing, which oh, is right so there. So that's the part that's not as damaged as you thought originally. Yes, this is not that damage right there. It's the upper above part to the left. Like that paint just looks bad, it's peeling, but right about there where that gutter is, that is all rotted right there. That part, and then the upper part on the to the right of that also. Going roadside to the right is like right where this paint is, is pretty bad shape, you know. A little bit in about two, you know, like right above the Francis on the sign. Yeah, exactly in that area. Okay. And then the opposing wall, because this would be, this would be the south side. So the north side, um, if you go the other side, is the other side that has the exact same problem. Because it's the same intricated gutter. Not that side. That's the flat roof side right there. Though. Right, that's what we already looked at. Hold on. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to make you dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> not going to look. <laughs> You'll tell me when to stop. Yeah. OK, keep going. That's it. It's it, huh? Huh, we must not have got a picture. It's the main, if you stop right here, it's this, it's the opposite side of this structure right here. It's the exact same pieces on the opposite. This would be like the south wall on that right there. The north wall is, is the exact same way. It's the same gutter system and it has the same issues due to the gutter system. I just ask you, the, where I'm putting my cursor right now, is this Main Street? Yes, that would be Main Street. That would be the gable end. So you would walk beyond that and take a left onto the other side of the building. Yeah. And okay. that would be... Right, right, right. I think I went to the dentist in this building. Yeah, <laughs> it was a dentist office at one point. Right. Um, so, I mean, the chimney, I, I, I would hate to see the chimney go. Okay. In a second, that. Yeah, it's a historic chimney, and it's sweet. <laughs> it's sort uh, of, yeah. Well, I will I will refer that to Franny then, and uh, mm -hmm. you know we'll we'll work you know we'll we'll work around that I guess, and I will let her know, and if she needs something different, I will let her contact you. Is that how that will go? Yeah, yeah she can come back okay. and say yes again with okay. a justification. Yeah. Like I said, we didn't, I didn't have anybody like a Mason look at it as far as, you know, rebuilding it. I just looked at it as like, I know it's capped off and the place has direct vent heat on the other side. So I didn't even look at it that way. My <laughs> thought honestly was just, when you're talking to a customer is about money. So it's like, you know, that yeah, was yeah, my yeah. side. So, but I will let her know that. Charles, let me just tell you a quick story. So I'm planning sure. on doing some work at my house, which is near here, yep. further than Holbrook Avenue. And um, my husband wants to redo our cottage behind it. And he said, let's just lose that chimney. It blocks the windows. It and I said to him, the historical commission will never approve that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's sort of how, that's, that's, that's that. Yes, we're we're yeah. also okay. bound by this. Yeah. Okay. I will, okay. I will, I will inform her. And uh, other than that, is there any other questions for me? Or are we, are we good now? I think uh, well, we, we need to make a motion and vote. Motion. Okay. Uh, um, it's so Gordon, would you like to make the motion motion on this one? Sure. I move that um, the uh, application to remove the integral gutter system and replace it with an aluminum preformed OG gutter while retaining all of the other soffit and fascia details with AZAC being used only above the angled board between the facade and the soffit. Um, I lost track of what I was saying, but that's what I approve. You're a master, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I second and, all the else, and all else is wood, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, great. Okay, I second the motion. I vote aye. 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 Okay, it looks unanimous. Okay, thank you very much, Charles. Okay, thank you. You folks hey. have a great night. And Charles, thank you so much for all the communication with me before the meeting. That really helped. Oh, actually, fun. hold on. I think we need to add um, that we do not approve the chimney being removed. Right. Right. We do not approve the chimney. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So I, I, am, I amend my motion to state that the chimney shall not be removed. Okay. And maybe we should just all do a raising of hand so it's clear that we all agree on that. Looks okay. like it. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks again, Charles. Thank you, Charles. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. You Bye -bye. too. Bye bye. Okay. Um, so we had a much shorter agenda tonight. May it continue to be so, but I doubt it. That still took us 45 minutes, Meryl. Right. Yeah, well, we're detailed. Um, so we do have um, some other items on the agenda. Um, Gordon and I met with Jim Badera, the new building inspector, who is lovely and um, very willing to work with us. Gordon, I was realizing afterwards, we still need to set up a regular time. He actually very generously proposed that we meet with him once a month. Yes, Katie and is so working on reaching out to him to set up a time that will be approximately a week prior to our hearing date every month so that we can check in with him. That way we can also cover any items that might be on the agenda. Yeah, I was thinking that we might, I don't know, ideally have it earlier in the week, we, although we wouldn't be able to cover, it's all right, never mind. She can figure it out. She'll figure it out. So, <laughs> you wanna say anything more about what we covered, Gordon? Yeah, I do. I mean, I spoke to Tim about this briefly when he and I had a Zoom over the weekend. Um, Great. You know, partly we were talking about accountability, that really what people present us with if even that, are what is referred to in the architectural world as design development drawings. They show us the general arrangement of things. They talk about what the materials are, but they're by no means construction documents from which someone would build. So there's a huge disconnect in that we're approving design development drawings, and then people go off and do whatever they're going to do on construction documents. So we're establishing a system with Jim whereby before he issues a permit, a set of the construction documents will come back to us. We'll review those drawings and put our stamp on them if in fact they're consistent with the approved design development drawings so that we have a way to trace the project all the way through. Um, I actually asked Tim, because he has a lot of experience reading drawings, if he would help do that with yep. me. Oh, wonderful, thanks Tim. So that um, we, can just we can just quietly back check everything and uh, We'd like to get to a place where it's all electronic so we don't have to go and sit in the building department and review sets of drawings. So that was one thing we talked about. And another thing we talked about is just the need for this regular communication that, you know, applicants, you know, kind of play us sometimes. The building department against the historical commission, against the zoning board, against all these things. And if we don't have direct communication with at least the building department, then we don't know we don't know. We're being told one thing, he's being told something else. And so it gets to be a big mess. So, so this regular monthly meeting is designed to help us stay in contact, to raise any issues, to talk about the upcoming agenda and the previous agenda. Um, and then Tim and I will take a look at the actual drawings for which, which are being used to apply for a building permit and make sure they're consistent with the drawings that we've approved. I'm so glad we did this. It's such a big improvement in the way we do our work. A huge improvement. And James also, when I met with James, and thank you again for, I guess he called you before he came to my house. Uh, he did, he called week, to so. ask what we, what we were yeah. looking for. Thank you very much for that. Um, but he, <laughs> I mean, he's, he's fantastic. And one of the things he also mentioned was um, oversight before he signs off on the final permitting, right. which I think is great because you can have all the construction drawings and we all know something might change. And as we just was just brought up, you know, things with the supply chain right now, you're unable to get the, the tiles you want. So let's just throw something in and he'll have that final say as well, which I think is fantastic. And he, it sounded like he did that of his own initiative, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, so. he wants to be in touch with us. Yeah. Yeah, he and he cares about historic preservation. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Okay, um, anything else you wanna say about that, Gordon? Or should we move on? Move on. All right, moving on. Um, Gordon and I also met with the select board about um, the design guidelines. Um, I sent the design guidelines as they're revised to everybody. Um, the main changes that we made were the introduction. Um, the select board originally was concerned about, um, I don't know if it makes sense to get into all of it. I'm not gonna get into what their concerns were. 
but <laughs> we address the concerns in the introduction and also by eliminating, I, I thought it would be actually fun and interesting to have information about historic windows, but they got all confused about that and thought that we were saying everybody had to have historically appropriate windows on all of their houses, which we didn't want to do. I just thought people would be interested, but it was not a good idea. So we just left that out. And, um, and they um, actually gave us a vote of approval. We didn't need their vote of approval, but we did ask for it just to make it clear to the community that we're working together on this and um, that even though they had concerns that we had addressed their concerns. It was good for um, kind of brand name recognition for our board and that we got before them. We talked about wanting to sort of standardize things, but not being onerous, that we're not Nantucket and we're not Chatham. We like funkiness but we still need to have some basis for approving that goes maybe beyond what the federal standards are at the Department of the Interior that are more sort of like Wellfleet specific. And um, Ryan, who's the select board chair, raised the question of his family, I think, was held up for a, a year because they wanted to install solar panels. Um, and the Historical Commission in East Ham apparently is very difficult. So I said, well, we can put that to bed right away, Ryan. I mean, the truth is we're in favor of solar panels as long as you keep the historical portions of the house intact so that if the panels were ever removed, the house would still be there. And everybody laughed and everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gordon did a wonderful job of presenting to them. And Meryl, um, and great morals. Well, I didn't say very much. I was just there cheering you on <laughs> silently. <laughs> Anyway, it was fine. And we're not hated so much anymore, which is one of our long-term goals. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's because, because we really want people to know that we, we're trying to work on viable compromises for people to enjoy their homes, but also be able to preserve and protect them. And um, hopefully we're getting that message across. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next item is um, the um, Form Bs. And uh, Jim and Mac have a great update for us. Yes, to go to? we well, Mac and I completed the proofing of the 15 form Bs that were submitted by Lynn Smilage, and we returned them uh, to her. Uh, they were in wonderful condition. I think Mac would agree. Um, sure, very well done. So they're they're uh, she she's going to hold those until she completes the. 10 remaining, so she'll submit 25. Great, to, to thank you so much for commission. doing that and being so efficient about doing it, both of you. Uh -huh. They're kind of fun to read, aren't they? Have, have you seen them before, Mac? I, I love reading them. Oh, I enjoy reading them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they were interesting places that I was glad to know more about. Oh, right. good, great. We always learn, um, learn a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the next part of this agenda item is um, the form B's from Eric Dre, who was the preservation specialist before Lynn. And um, I, I spent an enormous amount of time researching um, through the emails because nobody from the commission before could give me a clear picture of what had happened. Um, so without it getting into a great deal of detail, basically there are 50 form B's that Eric Dre um, did first drafts of, and the Historical Commission was supposed to have edited them and sent them back. And I, something happened, I don't know what, but that, it, that process did not get completed. And so he was, um, he had a contract for a certain amount of money. He didn't get the entire amount of the money because the process wasn't finished. And the, um, the contract was basically discontinued because it had a statute of limitations. So Jim and I have communicated about how we might handle this. Basically, there are two options. Um, you know, one is to go back to Eric Dre and ask him to finish the process. And the other would be potentially to ask Lynn Smilage to do it for us because she's already contracted with us. But we're thinking that ethically, it might be better to just go back to him and let him complete the process if he has the time and the will to do that. Do we have um, the money to pay him? The last part. well we don't yet so i'll let jim beep why don't you go next <laughs> do you want to talk about the money <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Uh, well, uh, we would owe him, uh, shall I say the actual amount, we we'll, we'll owe him the remainder that was on the contract, which I think is uh, $2,500 uh, for yeah. uh, doing this. Um, uh, but I, I feel that in good conscience, we should go, go forward with him if he's willing, because um, it, it really seemed that uh, he's not at fault for what happened here. Uh, that was not his doing. And uh, He's been, he apparently has been emailing and wondering when he's going to receive these uh, edited forms and not getting a response. Uh, so I feel he should have, uh, we, we should complete his contract if we can, but yeah. in a way that is uh, clearly appropriate. Uh, I, I agree with that. So when I asked, do we have the money? Is there money sitting in the bank? Well, we, 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 we don't have it on hand now, but we will um, if the town meeting uh, approves our grant proposal. And I think there's a high likelihood that that will happen um, in, in April. And then we have access to the funds on July 1st. Yeah, the, the CPC mm -hmm. um, voted that we should get a substantial amount of money for the coming year to continue to update the Form Bs. Right. For, and, then, and the CPC money, as I understand, is separate from the town's budget so that um, you correct. aren't hampered by yeah. the town budget problems. And the select board and the finance thing. committee, the select board and finance committee have both recommended approval. Great. So it's, yeah, it's, it's very nice that, you know, there's also more of an understanding that what we're doing is important work and there is. Um, that we're getting. Yeah. 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 yeah I think I, think I have a feeling that that presentation that Lynn did also helped with that because it became very clear what these form Bs are and what they're all about. Right, so I, think it, I agree. Yeah, the, the technicality is that his contract actually expired, Eric's, uh, on July 31st, 2019. Uh, and it was not extended at that time by mutual agreement. So what we'd be doing is issuing him a new contract uh, to complete the work. Mm -hmm. that, that Which I think is in keeping with the town's new procedures for handling grants and expenditures. Yeah. Um, so in terms of proceeding with this, would it make sense to have, how, do, how would we do this in terms of the CPC funds? Would it make sense for you to draw up a contract and do you need to run it by the CPC before I talk to him or should I talk with him first? Um, well, I, I think we, you know, we have uh, allocated in that grant um, uh, funds for the completion of, uh, of Form Bs, and we did not specify who would be doing that. So we would, we would need to contract with the individuals who are going to perform those services, and he would be one of them, obviously, Lynn Smilage, another person. If, okay. if, if we couldn't renew his contract or have him again because of statutory limitations, do we... Is there's no problem though giving him a separate contract, which is to complete incomplete work from his previous contract, that's excluded from the statutory limitations. Yeah, I I don't think we'd need to specify that it's a carryover from the prior. I think we'd say that it's a completion of of work uh, that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, actually, uh, go ahead. sorry. I, I go prefer, ahead. I, <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Sorry. Well, I was just going to. I think. I think that's legitimate to say. I mean, there's an aspect of this that if he weren't going to do it, uh, then we'd have to engage someone else uh, under the circumstances. But it's reasonable that he should complete his work. I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start with my contacting him about um, drawing up a contract and let yep. him know what the funding situation is. Mm -hmm. And the funding situation is that we wouldn't have the funds until July. To pay him, we wouldn't have use of them until July. That's right. If approved okay. at the town meeting, and um, and yet at the same time, are we, we're contracting with Lynn to do work that she won't be paid for until July as well? Is that true? No. That's, oh, we she, have she'll money. Be paid for all, she'll be paid for all twenty-five uh, of the form Bs that she's doing, and then oh, we, from, did new, we did a new contract uh, with the new grant approval. Okay. All right. So I guess that's the challenge about when he would actually start if he doesn't get paid until July. So um, is there a way on our Google Drive or wherever we keep historic 
go records of what we're doing, that someone can summarize this whole thing and put it in there somewhere so that when we're all long gone, they won't, the next person won't have the trouble that we've had trying to understand what happened. Um, I'm not sure we want to put it in great detail, frankly, on the drive. It's not, it's not a proud part of the history of the Historical Commission, and I think it partly happened because of the pandemic. The things just fell apart. Um, you can say that he was recontracted to complete previously incomplete work on such and such date or something. Okay, so not get into the details. I wouldn't get happened. into the fact that it was a right. slip up and passed the commissioners. I would just All say right. where we are now and what we've done. So okay. back with I can do that. And, yeah. and also maybe from a just a legal standpoint to draw that connection between the work already being done. I'm just thinking of like my contracts work. And so if he would to come back five years from now and say, you know, I never got paid for that specific contract, we at least have that in writing to cover it. Right. Okay. So Jim, since you've been, you were superintendent of schools once upon a time, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know much more about contracts than I do. Could we work on this together? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we will do that. Um, and um, let's see, Jim and um, Susan have um, begun work on the Historical Commission website. Are, are you willing to talk about that, Jim? Uh, yes, uh, Susan and I actually met with um, <coughs> Andrea Pluhar uh, on February 21st, a couple of weeks ago. Um, to discuss her services, her rates, and next steps to take in terms of a, establishing a commission website that's separate from the municipal uh, website. And uh, uh, she's, she's very familiar with and recommends uh, Squarespace as the, the platform. And uh, she recommended that we begin by developing a sort of a framework or a table of contents or what would be included in the website. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once, once we've done that, then she can give us a, a cost estimate of what uh, it would, her professional services uh, would uh, provide. Um, but her rates are quite reasonable. She gave us a range and I think it's, it's well within uh, what we can afford, and it's a, it's a one-time expense because it would institute something that is going to be maintained and uh, kept up. But uh, this this would be a one-time uh, sort of expenditure. So the, the first task really would be to say, um, you know, what's what's the table of contents? What is it mm -hmm. that we want to uh, to have in the website? Mm -hmm. And there there are some guides for that. I, I I know we have our own ideas, uh, but uh, to formulate that, I think would be important and to have the commission sort of have the approved uh, aspects uh, of what should be in, in the website. Uh, the Massachusetts Historical Commission has a best practices uh, guide uh, in terms of what's typically included or what should be included. And uh, there are also uh, five uh, communities uh, that have uh, their own websites that are separate from, in addition to, but separate from the municipal uh, websites. And it, it might be uh, helpful to look at those. Uh, and we have them. Uh, they're Andover, Arlington, Medford, Plimpton, and Sandwich. All have websites that are separate and auxiliary. So they would be models to look at. Great. So I, I think the next step would be to say, what is it uh, What is it that we want to have? And Susan and I could develop a list and present it uh, yeah. for discussion, or, or uh, Gordon and Merrill could uh, indicate what, what, what they think is important think, to include. I, personally, I think you and Susan could can develop okay. Okay. something and then, and then we can discuss it. That sounds yeah. fun. And that would be great. Add to it or subtract from it. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And I, I think we want, you know, at least some of the information that's on the current town website to be included in mm -hmm. our website. And you know, it's fine to do some editing and all of that. But um, and and then I'm sure there will be more. So right. thank you so much for getting started with us and planning to continue. Right.
You're doing a lot, Jim. So again, feel <laughs> well, free to every, Everyone is. <laughs> it's true. It really feels like we're all pulling together as a team, but I just want to be clear that I want you all to stay on the commission. So do let us know <laughs> if you're getting burned out. <laughs> so number um, seven. <laughs> so I, spoke sorry, to, was... I spoke to Peter McMahon about okay. doing some sort of a, another presentation, sort of like what Lynn did but about the modern houses in Wellfleet and the history, how they got here, not just the aesthetics, but sort of the whole shebang. Um, and he's, he's totally into it. He is still in Scottsdale, Arizona on sort of an extended vacation. And he and I are gonna have a cup of coffee when he comes back and we're gonna talk about how to do that. And I explained how the last one worked, what we'd be looking for. Um, and he was very interested in doing that. I don't know if he charges anything. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I will, keep tracking it down. And Great. Then, Do you know when he gets back? Uh, I believe it's next week. Okay. I'm actually going to be away from the 13th to the 18th. I have uh -huh. an emergency trip to Puerto Rico, guys. I need a break. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> an emergency trip. <laughs> We're glad it's not a real emergency and that you're going to have right. some priority. This time it's not, it's not an emergency, except that I need I need a break. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Gordon, it's pronounced emergency. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I hope Ed gets to go with you, too. Yes, no, Ed is coming, and Harry and his girlfriend are coming, and Carter is coming, and wow. Kevin is coming. It's his first little trip to the Caribbean, where they have abuelas. <laughs> <At the hotel. laughs> oh how very nice right this is us that you can hire <laughs> we, necesitamos ayuda. we need help <laughs> so, um, so, so give me the dates again that you'll be gone so i don't bother you <laughs> the 13th through the 19th of which month of march of this march month. okay great next week Wonderful. And then um, Tim and I had a really successful meeting concerning uh, the presentations for realtors. I'm gonna let Tim talk about that. Great. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna put together a PowerPoint. Um, I've already hashed out a small outline with, with Gordon. And the over, overall view of this is that we're gonna try to just working with realtors, we're gonna try to keep it short and let them ask questions. We're gonna kind of keep it to three sentences describing our criteria and sort of what we do. Um, and then follow up with some guidelines if they have any questions about it, but really keep it um, focused on what they need to um, let their clients know. So if you have a house that's you know 1965 or older or 1960, and you know we wanna let them know <clears throat> if they're planning on work in the next three years, these are the sort of things they might um, that will come up and that will come by us or if it's in the historic um, district, et cetera. So that way they, they just have a, a general baseline. Um, I've mm -hmm. spoken to, and we also wanna stress that we wanna be collaborative. We are always available if anyone in the real, real estate office has, or real estate uh, field has questions or if their clients have questions even before purchase. Um, and I actually was spoken, speaking with um, a few other people in my office recently and had mentioned the um, that we're working on this, and they, there was a lot of um, strong reception uh, about wanting to attend. And we'll, I'm still thinking that I'm going to go through the multiple listing service because it has such a broad reach. We might have agents that are, I know one um, that I've worked with in the past who's actually located in Brewster, who functions a lot in Wellfleet, who's also shown interest. So if it goes across Cape, we'll get everybody who's on the Cape Cod MLS, which is from Great. Middleborough up. Um, and I had mentioned about just an offhand comment about macros and form B's and everybody, but Sarah hadn't heard of this. Um, and they Sarah, were, nobody yeah, else. but they were super excited about this being a resource because I can't tell you how many times I've had realtor friends, even before I was a realtor, because I'm, I'm in architectural history and architecture say, send me a picture and say, how do I describe this house? But having that information and knowing that. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that can help them sell and something that they're interested in, which is the bottom line for realtors, but it also right. links back to us as being collaborative. So I thought that's something that we will include as well. Um, and we're mm -hmm. going to keep it, you know, 10 minutes maybe of talking and then open it up to questions because Lord knows that realtors like to talk. And this also ties <laughs> back into our, this also ties back into our own website. 
Yes. So yeah. that, that could be the go-to place to get to Macris to see what our guidelines are. Absolutely. To understand that. So we could do a presentation and we can say we're the process of developing this website and it's going to have all this all this stuff on it. So it, when we think about the website, I think we have to think about it in terms of potential homeowners, people who've lived here for a long time, people who are just interested in Wellfleet and realtors. Yeah. 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 You know. Who, who are going to look. Yep. So that's great. And I'm sure the your office was, but you have the best office in town. I, mean, I don't know if any other office is interesting, but, yeah. you, but you guys are good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I won't so speak much. about other offices. <laughs> I don't know about those other offices. Especially not while we're being recorded. But, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but, but I know Sarah knows much. about it. And, I mean, Sarah's yeah. very interested in, in preservation and grew up in a historic house in Park Slope. And yeah. You know, has a long history of being concerned about preserving historical details. Yeah. Or historic right. details. I never know what to say. And her house is stunning. So <laughs> that's great, Tim. Yeah. So you and I should circle back maybe after yeah. I'm back from Puerto Rico and have another zoo or even meet in person. Yeah, that works. Yeah. I know yeah, you're sure. in the middle of a house completion and a move. Yeah, we'll be I'll be busy weekends. I'm actually also going away, but only for three days from March 12th to the 15th. Um, yeah, but I'll be very flexible this month. So great. Yeah. Actually, I actually turned 65 this March 16th, which is why I, I actually turned 65 this March 16th. Oh, congratulations. So you're me having to get, on your way. Great. It's caused me to get Medicare. Found out. <laughs> <laughs> Which means that it's a wonderful benefit. <laughs> and that's, well, I just have to pay this additional premium, but I still have to pay my other premium because I pay for the office premium. So, and and it's and United Healthcare doesn't give a discount for me being on Medicare. They still charge what they've always been charging, but they become second in place, and Medicare huh. is first in place. So. As I looked at that whole kind of chain, it occurred to me that that's a great way for United Healthcare to get government funding. Mm. That's, that's basically what's happening. <laughs> United Healthcare is very good at getting funding in general, I found. <laughs> yes, they, they yeah. are good at that. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, oh, and the last item, <clears throat> which is about the Secretary of the Interior guidelines on flood ad adaptation, um, came up because. The person who bought the, the building that the potter lived in on Duck Creek that has the peace sign on it that's kind of near the well. He's in my um, office. Oh, he is. Okay, so he contacted us asking if, maybe he talked to you about this first, I don't know, but he contacted us asking if the Historical Commission has any, um, as he said, special provisions for people who are in flood zones. Mm. Um, and I can certainly understand why he's thinking about that because that building is so close to the water. And uh, so just in case you all wonder about that question, we do not have special provisions. And um, in fact, we haven't even talked much about this very important issue because as you all know, I mean, both Commercial Street in Wellfleet and Commercial Street in P-Town are very much at risk and they all have, both streets have a lot of historic buildings on them. So um, the question prompted me to start doing some research and I was very pleased to find that the Secretary, Secretary of the Interior actually has guidelines on flood adaptation that are excellent. I, I sent them to everybody. I don't know if anybody had a chance yeah. to look at them, but um, you know, they're very long. And in the beginning I was thinking, oh, this is just a whole lot of verbiage. But when you get into the actual examples of things that you can do, I, I found it interesting and I was thinking, um, you know, clearly this is an item for further discussion. I, and I don't know if we want to try to have an expert on the commission who knows more about these kinds of issues, but I do believe this is going to come up more and more with storms, with, you know, the sea rising, with the erosion that's happening. And we should think about what we think about historic buildings, because there are various ways to handle this and, um, and they're controversial, frankly. And no. one of the things that comes up is that if you're modifying more than 50% of the value of the structure itself or replacing more than 50% of its foundation and you're in a flood zone, if it's not a building that is somehow designated as being a historical building, you are required to make it comply with today's standards, which in some cases means taking a finished floor elevation from two feet above sea level to 14 feet above sea level. If you think about the house 
at the corner of Hallbrook and Main Street. Yeah. And so it's, it speaks to the notion that it's important that we get as much listed as historically significant as possible and that we provide people with guidance as to what kind of materials they can use and what means and methods they can use to help protect their house. Otherwise, we're gonna have a bunch of stuff that looks like its pants are too short. Well, did you, did you speak to James Bader about this? Because yeah. He mentioned it with me and he's got some, you know, after working, cause I know he's worked a lot, he's an engineer, worked a lot in Nantucket who has yeah. very strong and great solutions as well with the right. skinning and everything. And he just mentioned it slightly. So he might be a first resource to go to to start to figure out what those guidelines might be. We spent yeah, a lot of our last discussion with Jim talking about this. Yeah. Because Nantucket won't raise the buildings up. No. Just, they have other alternative solutions. Yeah, I'd like to know more about the alternative solutions because it seems like if, if we don't do something, clearly we're going to lose the buildings anyway. So to, to just say we won't raise them up because they're historic, mm -hmm. clearly is the answer. Um, so oh it, yeah, it'll be an interesting ongoing discussion, but I just thought I should raise it and let you all know it's on the table. Sorry, Mac. Um, aren't there, there are several buildings near me that have been raised and, and it, does the town have some kind of uh, regulation you know, I mean that that terrible house at the bottom of Holbrook is commercial so that is raised to its finished floor elevation in order to comply not with Wellfleet standards but with FEMA okay and the and the buildings down behind Holbrook on, on the on the marsh which ones Mac well no complex what? The condo complex? Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's a condo complex. It suddenly come into my, my view. Wait, why don't I know where that? Yeah. Where is it? Down behind um, behind Holbrook Avenue, behind the houses across from you. And they go in from, from a, down by the boatyard, they go in from a dirt road. Oh, that dirt road that's almost parallel to Holbrook, but kind of goes down towards the marsh? Yeah. Oh, I don't see, I don't even look down there because I can't see it from my house. I'll have to come look, I'll walk on your deck and look down. They yeah. may have been raised because of FEMA requirements as they opposed to- Because of that and, and that there were zoning issues and they got away with murder, I think. But, mm. <clears throat> oh, okay. but, but I mean, I'm doing a house now on a sand dune in Amagansett um, and it's sort of up on stilts, um, which caused me to use the Hatch House as inspiration. Mm because that vocabulary marries well with being raised up. Yeah. yeah. But those people out in East Hampton keep building these like shingle style houses on stilts and it looks very stupid. Yeah. Yeah, the hatch house is so beautifully designed for that yeah. setting. And I, I love the battening down the hatches idea that turns into a roof. Yeah, like that is that. good. Right. Yeah. But it is an interesting idea, and the, and the truth is, as Meryl, as you say, if we don't raise them up, are they all just going to wash away no matter how much ASAP we put on this thing? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you and know, take and all if, that and if, we do, and if we do raise them up, we have this strange condition yeah. that yeah. occurs where they're not at home anymore. Yeah. And, and it is, you know, I think about sustainability as well, and you should all know that there are sustainability guidelines as well through the Secretary of the Interior, but I also worry about that. So, you know, who knows if we're going to get it together to do what we should do by these buildings, and then all that AZAC goes into the sea, and we're right. sending plastic everywhere. Right, And, exactly. you know, I get that plastic helps us survive next to the sea, but I'm concerned about the amount of plastic we're putting on our houses and fences and shutters. And so I mean, anyway. I wouldn't, I would never put Azac on my house. Uh-huh. Personally. I yeah. would never do it. I ripped off the plastic shutters that were on my house when I bought my house. Mm -hmm. And I would never, ever, I just would never do it because I it's not sustainable appropriately. Yeah. And and also it's what's wrong with wood? So you have to take care of it a little bit more. These houses have been wood for 150 years. Yeah. Well, of course, the problem with wood, I understand from my husband, who's a woodworker, is that the quality of the wood has changed so much over right. the years. So it's not, runs, yeah. so it's not old growth anymore. And it gets it's moldy. Yeah. Right, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. still, people you know, look at ASAC and it always looks a little bit thin to me, that mm -hmm. ASAC. There's something about yeah. it. When we just looked at those photographs of the last project and you looked at where the AZAC scene was, 
the way yes, the seam was place. awful. I wanted to say, could we just at least have the seam in the corner and not in the middle? <laughs> but, right, or, or have a scarf seam, you know, with one of those ones that has this, so they fit together and they have more friction between the two pieces so they don't spread as much. Oh, huh. <laughs> Anyway. I know that solution. Okay, so I guess before we end, I'm realizing we forgot about one item, which is if we, I guess we can talk about this next month, but um, yeah, we can talk about it and forget about it. Um, so we need to approve um, Susan's minutes. Um, I don't know if anybody but me read them. Um, yeah, they're fine. <laughs> send them out. So, um, and they look good to me. And so I would like to propose that we accept her minutes. Agreed. All right. Anybody want a second for Jim's notes notes? We need a seconder. I guess you can I second. second. Jim. Okay, Gordon second. Um, Jim, is there anything else about accounting that needs to be covered? No. Okay. I think, and I, I think we're all set with everything else. We're meeting next on April 6th at five. And um, I hope people will let me know if you can't come because we are beginning to get into that point where everybody's anxious to get going. <laughs> Now that it looks like we can travel. So I, I imagine we may be losing people along the way. So thank you both for letting us know about your upcoming trips. And we'll yeah. go from here. We hope you have great trips. And um, I guess we'll still see both of you next month. Is that right? Yes, I'll Tim be back on March 19th. Yep. Putting together the PDF. Thank you so much. <laughs> great time. And to, a great birthday. I need to spend time with Susan talking about... Um, how to be a backup for the role that I play in hosting the meetings. And I haven't done that yet. So that'll have right. to happen. And that should be, you know, we need, I, need, I might need a tickler for that because okay. I think we need to have somebody. I mean, if I got sick or something, not that I'm getting sick, but for, if for some reason I couldn't be at a meeting, no one would know yeah. how to. I think that's really important. So you're gonna ask her to, to do the Zoom part and also the putting together the materials part. Exactly. Okay. And um, yeah, I've been thinking about that too, in terms of my putting together an agenda, I might need a backup as well. Um, so if anybody's interested in helping with that, I, you know, I, the good thing is that those, generally they come in a little bit over time, but sometimes they come in at the last minute. Um, so I'm trying at this point to schedule time away a, around our meetings, but it'd be nice not to have to do that. Right, exactly. Yeah. I guess. All right. all right. I think yes. we're all set unless anybody has anything they want to say before we finish up. Good meeting. I think we're doing great. <laughs> I do too. I think this is an awesome team. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you all and um, have a good night. Thanks. Take care. Good, good, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.